What is up guys? Welcome to a brand new video on today's, I believe now episode four of Race to Sebring. One thing that we need to make sure that we have on our car are tow hooks. These bad boys here are going to protect you when you're going, when you go off track and you have someone come pull you out of your whatever mistake might have occurred. And the last thing you want one of these drivers to do is hook up your car on the wrong position or the wrong place and cause more damage to your already wounded ego and wounded car. So what I have here is LG Motorsports front and rear tow hook package. And then on top of that, I'm not crazy about how this kind of sits here where, you know, it just kind of sticks out in the front of the car. Not entirely thrilled with that one. So I did order the ZL1 add-on, which is basically a little bit cleaner. You know, it folds down, kind of hanging off the front of the bumper like this. But what I'm realizing is I only have this much threads, right? If I put this here, I have now extended my tow hook substantially past my bumper. So we're going to see how this places. If it, if it looks a little too awkward, just six inches past my bumper, I may or may not use this option. But in typical Vader fashion, there's never anything that I do on this car that's just follow step A and then move on to step B. I have both my brackets here. They look beautiful, but I can't seem to find the mounting screws or the mounting tools. Now, I'm not going to blame LG for it because I've had this for a couple weeks now, and I am one of these kind of guys where if I find a box, more than likely it's going to go in the garbage much earlier than it should. So there's a high likelihood that I tossed it by accident. But of course, in typical Vader fashion, there's always got to be some sort of hiccup or obstacle that I must go through to do anything. So I'm going to rush to Home Depot and I'm going to kind of see if I can find any stats online about the length of the bolts that I needed. Um, I can technically tell the width, basically the diameter of the bolt by the holes on this thing, but see if I can find it and still get it installed. I do want to get this installed before I go out on track, which is a couple weeks from now. So. Let's see what happens. Even up, I'm putting those tow hooks on. I went online real quick and basically saw the length of the bolts in the pictures. They're not very lengthy. Um, I think there's a couple that are a little bit lengthier. The rear tow hook actually uses the factory bolts from the exhaust hangers that are there. So I'm gonna buy a few different variations and sizes and worst case, I'll return them. If not, I'll keep an extra spare at home for you know whatever the case may be. But just like everything else on this car, I'm not gonna stop and wait you know, and potentially call G and try to blame it on them for the screws. More than likely, I just threw away the box with the screws in them. Um, so I'm just gonna go pick some up, put it on the car, get it installed, see what it looks like and get one step closer to uh, racing on the track. And, and one, of the, one of those things is having those tow hooks on. It's not required in certain um, events and certain event groups, but again, you don't want you know, you slide off the track a little bit, they're gonna pull out their chains, or they're gonna pull out their pretty much their winches to pull you off. You don't want them to hook up to something that might be a bit more frail, a little bit more fragile. Your car's already gonna probably have a little bit of cosmetic damage, and then they go ahead and they create a lot more just trying to get your car out. So it's important to have those tow hooks. Um, and it's also important to invest in good tow hooks. There's a lot of like eBay tow hooks, those sorts of things, and you can see a lot of people that have quality tested them. They're usually pretty crappy. Um, and their ability to hold, you know, pressure and stuff like that without snapping is pretty low. So invest in the right tow hooks. I've seen a lot of people run the LG Motorsports one. The car has a couple of LG Motorsports parts on it already. So I'm a big fan of them. Um, rocking their shirt today. So let's get this installed. We're not stopping. We're going to get it done. Let's go. So we've gone ahead and, uh, shot to the old Home Depot. Got some lock, uh, lock nuts or washers, however you want to call it. Some bolts, which I hope are long enough. Actually, I didn't check that part. I believe they are. And then these are for here. Now you can't really see it on camera, but you know, I got those. And then the back ones, like I said, they use the, uh, the actual exhaust hangers, um, factory placement. So, and of course, in typical fashion, oh no, here it is and here it is. Okay. All right, we're good. I thought the uh, cashier did not put that other screw in there. We're gonna start with the back. I think that'll be the best way to start this car. Um, it does require the car to be lifted up from its current position, kind of jack it up a little bit, get under it so I can actually see and then get the, uh, and see what we got to take apart. So let's uh, jump into that. My iPhone camera, there are the two bolts. They're right in beneath the two uh, exhaust tips. They're basically, let me zoom this thing out a little bit. They're right there. 
Uh, so I'm gonna use a ratchet wrench, loosen them up and see how easy it is to get this uh, tow hook installed. So the rear uh, LG Motorsports tow hook is nice and installed. Um, you can take the exhaust hanger bushings off to kind of give you a little bit more play in the exhaust. I actually have the center bracket that connects these all four quad tips together is actually, I just realized it's broken. So I was able to maneuver it without really taking it off the actual rubber mounts. Um, it is a pain in the rear to get in there. I ended up using a combination of a of a ratchet wrench and then on top of that you know the standard socket wrench my bolts were 13 millimeters um backed them out obviously i put this first against the chassis and then the um the exhaust brackets after that some people remove the vacuum there's a vacuum line apparently on this side of the exhaust you know i saw that in the instructions i didn't touch any of that i basically worked with the room i have i'm always the kind of guy that i'll go through a little bit more trouble to take apart less stuff um, so that's kind of what I did, um, but I'm glad I put it on there. It's nice and sturdy, um, so we're ready to move. But that kind of explains why these exhaust tips are further out than these. So I'll get that fixed in the near future, but let's move on to the more challenging part, which is the front. You gotta remove the bumper for that, and I do believe there's some drilling into the uh, bumper brackets or the bumper brace. So we're gonna get working on that now and get that one installed. So this part's a little bit trickier because I gotta get this bumper off. Um, that way I can kind of enter this area here behind it, right where the bumper bracket's at. We're gonna drill into the bumper bracket and then um, use the hardware that I bought. And hopefully it's long enough, not I'll run back to Home Depot, but install the hardware there. And then we do have to down here in the honeycomb section of the grill, you do gotta cut a couple because the, uh, the adjustment nut or the lock nut that's on the actual toe bracket does not clear this area here when you're trying to put in the actual hook so you do have to cut that open and kind of put it you only have to cut a couple it's not a big deal um but yeah first we're gonna work on getting this bumper off um, then we'll visualize the situation here mark up where we got to drill and get that all done admire about the uh the old corvette here is it's over engineering of anything on this car typically the average car bumper you know you have a couple maybe some couple screws here you have a couple on the fender liner and maybe a couple on the engine on the car but this thing's got screws everywhere i've unbolted from here i've taken the fender liner off all these bolts at the very top are loose but at the bottom um this car has the zr1 lip with the zr1 brake ducts so i have to loosen that to kind of get in there um, and be able to remove it. Then obviously I got to remove the wiring for all these different lights, uh, all the more remoto uh, heads and fogs. Oh, I don't want to mess with the headlights, but definitely the fog lights and obviously the side markers I've already done. And the bumper has majority of screws out and still pretty darn stiff. So um, I knew the front of the car was gonna be a problem first. That's why I did the back first. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a little bit of work. So spare some time to meticulously go through all the bolts and not be pulling and yanking on the bumper and stuff like that. So um, I'm gonna keep cracking at it. I found a couple bolts on the engine on the cover here that I gotta remove and hopefully then I'll have the front bumper off and go from there. Well, this car really does love to be a pain in rear. It's probably taking me a good hour just to loosen up the front bumper it's it's not going to be every case situation right there's a, just a lot of stuff plugged into this one um like i said it's got the zr1 uh, brake ducking so we gotta unbolt that um i mean it's got more tie straps in here than i've ever seen before in my life so i'm gonna kind of go through it now that i'm gonna have the bumper off it has an aftermarket front camera on the front that's kind of wired to the radio um there's no quick disconnect and where i assume the quick disconnect is for the harness it's taped up so i'm going to untape it see if i can loosen it because i can't pull the bumper off if that's the case so um but at least it's down and we can start working on getting the tow hook part done so i, I don't have my brake duct but on this side i still have it on here the reason was because i originally tried to go that route which is just removing it from the lip leaving 
the brake duct installed on the car. But this side decided to uh, pivot and drop the wrench, the socket wrench, right into it. So I had to remove it this way to actually access it and get my socket back. But like I said, now I need to go ahead and remove the foam so I can actually get to the crash bar and go ahead and start the install at that point. There's tons and tons of tie wraps here. This is just perfection ingenuity. I'm gonna tie wrap the crap out of this thing too. So I'm not hating on it at any point. So let's go ahead and remove this bar. I believe it's like a 13 or a 15 millimeter. Take the foam off so we can access the crash bar and go from there. It's installed, there's not holes. You actually have to drill them in. There's one pre-drilled one down here. So you basically have to line that screw up, right? I'm gonna back out here. Look how the length of this uh, crash bar is. So you have to use a little bit of ingenuity, you know, home base stuff. I'm going ahead, taping the nut onto this beautiful little, uh, come on, focus, buddy. Here we go. I'm going to tape it there with some masking tape. And then I'm going to tape my 13 millimeter wrench to my, pretty much my longest bar that I own, masking tape the crap out of it so that I can hold the screw and then drill it from the bottom. Once it's in place, I'll work on the other screws. Here we have it. Follow me for more mechanic tips. I'm gonna go ahead, slide this in there, kind of allow this opportunity, uh, the nut to be kind of in place here. Then I'll drill from the bottom, um, get the first one in place. That way it's mocked up and then I can make the holes for the other ones and go from there. So number one is on, it's already really solid. We got to drill here, got to drill one more down here to kind of get into here. I probably should have mocked that one up. I'm going to prioritize these top two ones because they're a little bit easier with a shorter screw um, and go from there. But man, she is already pretty freaking tight with just one. Um, obviously I lost the hardware to the LG Motorsports one. I just went to Home Depot, picked up some stainless steel bolts. I did a lock washer and a lock nut. Uh, to just help. There's not typically vibration here, but I just want to make sure that at no point um, was this going to rattle out of place. It's actually more important to uh, lock tight the rear one because it is, uh, the mufflers are moving around quite a bit, which will vibrate the, the potentially vibrate the back out the screws eventually. Um, but this one is not as big of a deal, but I still wanted to put it on there just to be sure. Very known is that with the honeycomb, you can't fit this as is intended, right? You can't get this nut through. At least, even though I feel like I can, I just got to cut a small area. Um, here's the ZL1 add on one. This is the one I kind of want to add. As long as I can keep this thing further back, I don't want it to stick out, you know, six inches from the car. Um, I might just stick with this one. I really like how this one looks. So, um, I'm gonna try to mock it up now. I might just cut right here just to give me a little bit better space and not have to really make too large of a hole. If not, I'll just cut these two corners here just to give me the proper freedom to uh, tighten it correctly. All right, I'm sold. This looks freaking good. Not gonna use this one. I'm uh, gonna stick with the Z01 add-on kit. The bumper is still kind of mocked up. I still gotta finish tightening that up. But man, if you guys have watched this far, make sure you like and subscribe, guys. It really does help the channel grow helps me helps motivate me to keep creating this content but then i go ahead and finish tidying up everything here and then we'll wrap up the video at that point but man i really like how this one looks i was really concerned about it sticking out super far uh but that's not the case at all so i'm really really happy with how it looks all right well that's it for the tow hook install front and back are done bumpers dialed in I uh, miswired one of my fogs, so I got it later tonight. You know, I got to step out, get some lunch and stuff, but I'll rewire the fogs later today. But everything turned out really, really good. I'm actually really happy with uh, how good it turned out. I gave it a quick little rinse because tomorrow we are going to go and take a ride to Carson Coffee. So like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.